Good morning. We're here doing our one-year Bible study. <clears throat> I sure do appreciate you guys giving me the flexibility to be with my mom. I'm going to go back again today. Uh, she's still in the hospital, and um, she's getting better. <clears throat> but, man, she certainly came under attack. There's no two ways about it. So uh, if you've been seeing my post, you know that <clears throat> she had a kidney infection, and then ended up with a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in her lung, and then fighting a stressed heart, because all of that put stress in her heart, and then um, septic, uh, her blood becomes septic, so she had, uh, I can't even say it right, uh, anyway, septic, and septic infection, sepsis, sepsis thank you, Tom, <laughs> sepsis in her blood, and any one of those things can be life-threatening at her age, and but God's good, and she's a praying woman, and she knows she's healed, and she knows these attacks um, are much less than the healing power that lives on the inside of her. So I'm grateful for that. And you know, then some more test results came back yesterday, showing some issues with her liver. And um, but I'm, I'm just telling y'all, my mom's going to make a complete and full recovery, and um, she'll regain her strength and. Your prayers are a big, big part of that. And I sure appreciate the flexibility you guys always give me. But again, you know, I'm here to encourage the whole purpose of this Bible study going online and uh, being put on YouTube is not so that you follow me every single day. It's so that every single day I'm encouraging you to be reading in the Word for yourself. Uh, we use the one year Bible uh, reading plan um, that I've used for the last 13 or 14 years. And when you read it all the way through, start to finish, then you've read the Bible all the way through in a year's time. And it's powerful. It's powerful. And um, we're reading in Job uh, chapters 31 through 33. Um, today we hear Job once again um, plead his case. And today as I was reading it, I was kind of taken with how many scriptures that he quotes he, he talks about God, and he talks about the Word and uh, the scriptures that have been written down back in his time. Um, it's, he didn't have a one-year Bible he got to pick up. He didn't have a Bible that he got to pick up, but he, he definitely talked about um, the promises that he knew that was from God. It starts right in verse 2, what would be my portion from God above and my heritage from the Almighty on high, and there's so many scriptures that talk about that. And then the calamity for the unrighteous and disaster for the workers of iniquity is right from the word. Does not he see my ways and number all my steps? That's one of my favorite scriptures, and I hadn't realized it's in, this, in Job as well. Um, it's one of the reasons why I can say everything today is as it should be. Um, not because everything is perfect. I mean, it's not perfect for my mom to be in a hospital fighting for her life right now. Um, that's not perfect, but everything is as it should be because I'm his and because he sees my ways and he numbers all my steps. When I relinquish my right to do it my way and I say, Lord, here I am, I will follow you. That is when his plan starts playing out because he sees my ways and he numbers my steps. There's another a scripture that will say he directs my path. So when I give up my right to say that I need to do this today, this is my agenda, this is what I, it was not on my agenda to be sitting with my mom in the hospital this week, but I'm right smack dab where God wants me to be. And there's so much peace in that. I mean, I, I don't have to second guess myself. And anyway, it goes on and Job makes, uh, continues to plead his case. And then the fourth friend speaks up for the first time today, getting ready to come to the conclusion in, in Job um, all the way through there. In fact, his, his last friend who had not spoken up until the readings today, he also quotes scripture. Um, when you get familiar with the word, then you start recognizing these things. Um, but anyway, just, that was an interesting tidbit um, about, about how they had interjected uh, the scriptures into what they spoke about. 
Uh, and then I really wanted to get to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 3. We're reading in verses 1 through 18. I'm probably just going to read it because this is so, so, so powerful. Uh, now remember, this is Paul writing to the church that he had uh, helped found. Uh, he founded the Corinthian church. And he went on and had left the Corinthian church to continue its work for the kingdom. And he's writing back to them. And I love the words that he's speaking to him because it's just like he's speaking to you and me today. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? It's just like he asked me, Elizabeth, are you getting a little full of yourself again? Are you making it about you? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? Elizabeth, are, what are you needing? Are you needing an endorsement from me or from man? Is there... Are you looking for approval from man? You yourselves are the letter of recommendation. You, Elizabeth, are the only letter of recommendation you need. <clears throat> Written on your heart to be known and read by all. It's just as though Paul asked me, Elizabeth, do you really think you need the approval of man? Do you have to have a recommendation from somebody on earth to do what God's called you to do? Don't you know? that just by being you and by following God every single day, your life should be the only letter of recommendation anybody needs because they ought to see Christ all over you. And you show that you're a letter from Christ delivered by us. <laughs> Are you a letter of Christ being delivered every single day? written not with ink but the spirit but with the spirit of the living god see it's not what elizabeth does there, there's no glory to these videos whatsoever if there's any glory to anything i say or do it's the spirit of the living god going forth not elizabeth and that's how it is for you see it takes the responsibility off of you Many of you are sitting out there saying, well, I can't be used by God. Well, he doesn't have a plan for me. He doesn't have a purpose for me. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Everything is as it should be right now today if you're his. And if you're not his, that can be taken care of that fast. That fast. I mean, you bow your head and you tell God that if, even if it kills you, that you're his. And, and you want to be all that he wants him he, that he wants us to be, and then just set about today living your life for God. It's that simple. And you know what? For most of us, it's not going to be that great of a change. I mean, <laughs> he still he still is going to expect us to go to work and make a living. He's still going to expect us to wash the dishes and and cook supper. He's still going to expect us to take care of our family, take care of ourselves. He's still going to expect us to be good grandmas and good grandpas. He's still going to expect us. It, it's not that great of a change, and yet it's the greatest change that ever takes place when you truly accept who he is and allow him to rise up in you and let him be the letter to the world. <laughs> And you, and, you, and you show that you are a letter from Christ, delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves. See, that's what I've been saying. It's not, it's not anything I'm capable of doing. It's not anything you're capable of doing. The only thing the only thing is, is that we just simply submit to him. We just become his. And we become one with him so that that scripture is fulfilled that tells us that, that as he is, so are we in this world. <clears throat> now that we are, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. See, our sufficiency is from God. Are you lacking something? Are you missing something? Are, is there a longing that's not being fulfilled? Are you being tempted, you know, to do uh, sexual things that you shouldn't be doing? Are you tempted to smoke cigarettes? Are you being tempted to 
the things that would harm you. I, I, I don't even want to put, I don't even want to put a label on it because, you know, whether you smoke cigarettes or not doesn't have anything to do with how much God loves you. I'm telling you, it doesn't have anything to do with whether I love you or not. It's just an indication of how we search for, I, you know, myself, myself. Uh, uh, I'm just transparent with y'all. I haven't mastered this thing called eating yet. How I still comfort myself with food instead of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can't point a finger at anybody else. I'm, I'm guilty. Because all of my sufficiency is from Him if I will continue to submit, if I will continue. I mean, mm, <laughs> it's just powerful stuff. It's what I wanted to read today. It's not me. When, when you disqualify yourself and say, oh, I can't be used by God. There's nothing he wants me to do. Then you're just being selfish and you're being prideful. And I was there for a long time and I've got sins in my past. I've got brokenness in my past, bad decisions in my fat past that I used to disqualify myself for a very, very long time. But this, this takes care of all this. Today's scripture takes care of all of that for you, if you'll allow it. Um, um, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? So he's telling us that we're competent. For us to say we're not is calling God a liar. <clears throat> he's telling us that our ministry will have greater glory than the ministry of Moses. And for us to say it doesn't is calling God a liar. <clears throat> and then if you stop and think about that, I can't even imagine what Moses felt when God's image passed by him on that mountain and he was transformed and he, he had a glow on him so bright that when he came down off the mountain, that he had to cover himself because he scared the Israelites. I mean, the glory was so powerful on Moses. I can't, I, looking at it from Moses' pos, uh, position, I can't imagine his perspective, perspective of it. But then even the Israelites, I mean, to see that kind of glory and to hear what they heard at the foot of, foot of that mountain, they heard God's voice. Um, and they saw God's glory. And yet right here in scriptures, he's telling us that what he has prepared us for, he has prepared us for, not what we've prepared for, what he has prepared us for is greater glory than any of that. Wow. For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, which is what the law was, the law condemned us. The ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. See, if all we're talking about is condemnation and sin, 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 then we are under the law uh, living a life of condemnation. I want to talk about the Christ in you, the hope of glory. I want to talk about what he has planted inside of you, the dream. I want to talk about the Christ in you. He wants us to focus on the Christ in us, because that glory far exceeds any condemnation. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. You know, it's why we read, why we go through the Old Testament. I mean, the stories we have read, the uh, miraculous things that's taken place, all the way from the locusts and the red blood uh, to, to um, um, Moses uh, freeing the Israelites, all the way through the Red Sea parting and, and the fire that Ezekiel called down, burning up the, the uh, altar with water on it. I, I mean, all of that, he is telling us, pales in comparison to the glory. <laughs> That, that's before us. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was being brought to an end 
came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. See, our salvation is permanent. We never die. We never die. Oh, and get this. Listen to this. Read this today. Study it for yourself. Let it sink into your spirit, man. Since we have such a hope. <laughs> oh, I've been at a place where I didn't believe there was hope. I believed a lie. There is hope. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end, but their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. And get this. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. We are being transformed from one glory to one glory to one glory into the image of Christ. Wow. And thus, we are the letter of recommendation for Christ, written for the whole world to see. <sighs> from this comes, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Corinthians are teaching us how to be Spirit-filled, how to allow the living God to come inside of us, fill us to the full and overflowing. He is inside of us. It's not something we're waiting to have happen. He is inside of each one of us. It's the finished work of the cross that we're living with. He is inside of us, but the Corinthians is teaching us how to be empowered to be as he is, as he was on this earth, that we are the Christ on this earth, taking him with us everywhere we go. People are changed because you walk in the room. You don't have to say a thing. You don't have to do a thing. You don't have to wave a letter of recommendation to anybody. Simply because you show up, peace reigns in the middle of chaos. You've got family members that's fussing and feuding. Just your presence makes a change because you are being transformed into the same image of our Lord Jesus Christ from one degree of glory to another. Whew. People are healed just by touching the hem of your garment. You have to believe it, and it has to go beyond belief into knowing, and it's faith. Faith is how we know that this is truth. I mean, today's words are so powerful and and what it is it's the revelation of the power that is inside of each one of us if we'll walk by faith in the revelation knowledge of that power we lay hands on the sick and they're healed i prayed that blood clot out of my mother i'm telling you the power of the holy god inside of me prayed that blood clot out of my mother she never spent a day in ICU. That's to God's glory, not mine. But, but, but he's teaching me these things. Do you think today, uh, on a date like today, August the 29th of 2017, it's a coincidence that he's reminding me, Elizabeth Inman today, reminding me of who I am in Christ so that I can go back to that hospital and not just for my mother, but whoever comes into contact with me, whoever touches the hem of my garment, understanding its spirit. Let me read to you, lest I be under, misunderstood. For this comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. And it's his spirit, folks, that live on the inside of me. And he's no respecter of person. He lives on the inside of you. And he's moving me from just believing into knowing. Praise God, he's moving me into knowing by faith. The same faith that allows me to believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin is the same faith that lets me believe the words in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. 
read it and read it and read it and read it and let it sink in until your belief starts growing, until your belief starts growing into the knowing of who you are in Christ. I love y'all. Keep praying for my mama.